up and down game, and certainly the Badgers are a team that make a lot of things happen defensively. They do so many things to try to disrupt you. Stu Jackson has really brought an exciting style to Madison, Wisconsin. Now, Larry, they use what I would call double pressure. They like to use pressure at the defensive end of the court, but also they bring up very quickly to make you get back on defensive end of the court. They like to bring an offensive pressure to the game. And the Hawkeyes are taking a look at it as on their first possession, the shot clocks at 10. They're trying to force it inside for Looking Bill, and it is out of bounds off of Finley. Stu Jackson in his first year head coach of the Badgers, former head coach of the New York Knicks, and what a job he's done in his first season. Badgers 14 and 11 coming in. Kilbride fouls Barnes. Val Barnes getting it on track draws that attention. What's going to be interesting is the center position, the battle there. You have Harrell going against A.C. Earl, but the bench is loaded with other center performers that have gotten a lot of minutes over the last couple of years, so they've got a lot of fouls to give against A.C. Earl. 19th in career scoring, Val Barnes with 1,311 points has struggled lately. And the reason I say they have a lot of fouls to give is Larry, the offense does not come from the center position. It comes from Webster and Finley. Forty-five seconds into the game, it is still scoreless. Winners can't control, and the basketball belongs to the Badgers. Here are the officials tonight. A veteran of Final Four officiating Ed Hightower, joined by Steve Wilmer and Tom Clark. I kind of wonder if Eddie Hightower is worried about making the uh, tournament field of officials, huh? Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> He's a perennial, almost like a Supreme Court justice. He's there for life. The Badgers love the three-point shot. And Kelly, from the perimeter, Winters takes it away from Harrell. Nobody scored a minute 10 into the game. But that changes as Kevin Smith to the at the other end, Harrell answers in the transition bucket for the Badgers to tie the score at two. Looking Bill tries to answer for Iowa. His three is long. Barnes, an offensive putback that won't go. Looking Bill wants to go back up in the crowd, and Finley knocks it away. One thing the Badgers are greatly concerned about, being able to rebound with the Hawkeyes. But not been a great rebounding team. Part of it is because they shoot so many threes, and they're very quick to look, like right there. Earl with the rebound. AC Earl leading the conference in rebounding and tied for the lead in block shots. Here's Winters. James Winters starts extremely strong for the Hawkeyes in many games. Had trouble the other night against Northwestern and had a great second half. Starting to get some maturity to his game, and he's put two halves together. Earl on the foul, and the team fouls are even at one. Winners down on the block. This is his best offensive move. A little fade away. High arch on it. Good touch. About six feet away from the basket. At the free throw line, Damon Harrell, 72 percenter. Quick change for the Badgers. Jason Johnson, a junior from New Hope, Minnesota, replaces Andy Kilbride. Johnson has 45 three-pointers this year, but the Badgers have three in the top 10 in three-point shooting in the conference. I'll tell you, Larry, if the name Harrell is familiar to some Iowa fans, especially football fans, his father played at the University of Iowa. George Harrell, he was a defensive lineman, defensive end back in the Evershevsky days. Is only a 67% free throw shooting club. It's now four to three. The Iowa lead is one. Webster against Smith. That's always a fun matchup. Jay Webb into the Iowa lineup. James Winters, who is still bothered by the flu bug, steps out. Kenyon Murray has also come in for the Hawkeyes. Two and a half minutes down, and the Hawkeyes with a four to three lead. Now, early, I was showing offensive patience. Is it because of Badger defense, or are they trying to set a tempo? Here? I think they want to set a tempo and not let Wisconsin get out on a, a run. They love to get it up and down the court. They don't want to give up five or seven points in a quick span of time. And the Badgers are about to make a change. The veteran Lewis Eli comes on as Tom Davis, who did his 
graduate work, his master's degree from the University of Wisconsin, stares in at the action. The shot clock is down at six. Kevin Smith knows that and nails a three, his sixth of the year. That's not the high percentage shot the Hawkeyes want, but they will take it. This is a Kevin Smith game. Up and down the court, use your quickness, and there'll be a lot of open gaps for him to go to. Eli trying to tightrope and couldn't. Look at Kevin Smith. That's two feet behind the arc, and it is net time. But Kevin Smith will like this game. I think Kenyon Murray, James Winters, both of them, slashing type athletes from the wing position, can play very well. Number 43, Jeff Peterson has come on for Wisconsin, and Stu Jackson really uses his bench. The early rebounds favor the Hawkeyes. Stu Jackson really concerned about that. Quick move, Barnes to the baseline, and the deflection by Johnson. Jason Johnson staying right with Val Barnes. Val Barnes trying to get it going offensively. A little forced shot. Good defense, though, by Johnson. Getting those elbows out, ready to make sure he can slide through screens, create his own space. Hawkeyes a 7-3 lead. The penetration by Murray, and he is fouled by Webster, who moves into it. Second foul called against Wisconsin. The Talk about players trying to step up, and there's so many who have to really join the veterans, Earl and Barnes, for the Hawkeyes to be successful in the tournament. They've got youth out there, people like Murray, Glasper. But they need to have some positive experiences in the last couple games. If Kenny Murray now has gone like four for 17 in his last eight games from the free throw line. He's only 56% on the season. And Murray really struggling. The Hawkeyes have had four free throw opportunities. They haven't got any of them down. So a slow start in what we'd expect to be a very high scoring game. Still could be, but a slow start. Well, Wisconsin's gonna put up threes. They're not gonna change their game plan. So they're gonna get some scoring opportunities. Shot clock's down to 22, which is almost a stall for the Badgers. Hawks look to add to a four-point lead. Looking Bill finds Earl. And he is fouled. Looking Bill going up, looking like he was going to shoot, dumped off inside. And again, we see the good hands of A.C. Earl. Wade Looking Bill having that ability now that he has become a good perimeter shooter to go up, look for the jump shot, and make some decisions at the last second. Foul called against Finley. We got a timeout. 7-3, to three, Iowa with the lead. As Stu Jackson watches the action from the Badger bench as the feed comes into Millard, who's just come into the lineup, as has Monter Glasper and Jim Bartlett. So both coaches using their bench extensively, even four minutes into the game. Earl, his first look at A.C. Hawks off to a good start, lead by six. Finley, and Bartles has the rebound. And then draws all kinds of red shirts, and the possession arrow gives this one to Wisconsin. Well, A.C. Earl, it's the same story. Get it inside, draw three people, and then figure out a way to score. He's done it all season. And, of course, at the other end, you talk about not just blocking shots, but chain shots. That's an intimidation factor. It doesn't show up on the statistics sheet, but that is one reason he will be able to play in the NBA. Finley looks to see if he's behind the three-point barrier, and when he is, he nails it. You saw him look for the line, Mac. Well, he leads the league in making three-pointers, almost three a game. He's also second in the league in scoring, averaging 23 points. Oh, what a feed to Bartlett. Wow. Great feed from AC. A.C. Earl has passed so well all year. What a beauty of a feed this is. It's a complete game that Earl is adding. Looking, and then a slip under pass under the arms. Defensive people drawn to him. Man open. Bartles finishes. The Hawkeyes playing their eighth game in 19 days, Mac. That's quite a grind. And this ball game, 
they really be a tough one on the pitch from a physical standpoint for Iowa. I think the kids today were looking forward to it because they think they have an opportunity to go up and down the court, not just bang inside for a whole game. The large travels, the turnover gives the Badgers the ball. You know, when you're a little tired, you still enjoy going up and down the court rather than getting in a, a plow match underneath the basket all the time, banging, bumping. I was excited about this game. The Badgers know they've got to win this one to have any hope at the NCAA tournament. And then what they have to do is down Indiana at home on Sunday. I think there's still going to be an excellent opportunity to go to the NIT, even if they don't. And Steve Jackson's done a tremendous job with his team in just one year. Finley misses the three, and Millard has his first rebound. Millard can shoot from there, a three try right there. The second three-point of his Hawkeye career. And we saw Russ Millard stay after practice, probably shoot for another half an hour, primarily on perimeter shots. Paid off for him. He's still looking for his first collegiate dunk, though. He wants that one. But he's talking about it enough. Ah! Kelly sneaks in, tries to get the rebound. Millard with some contact, and he got called for the push. It'll be his first foul, the Hawkeyes' second. The Badgers have three. Team foul number one. Finley to inbound. Badgers trying to shake a two-game losing streak at home against Penn State. Saturday at Northwestern. It's, oh, our surprise. Brett Kelly, look at the basket. They find Finley at three-point range. Boom! His second tray. 14-9, Iowa up by five as Murray on the other end has it rejected by the athletic Finley. But Earl comes up with it. Three of four from three-point range. Earl from the perimeter. Everybody's feeling. And you know, you talk about low shooting percentages. When one team starts to shoot well, the others get excited. This is a shootout. Oh my goodness. That is four from three-point range for Finley. And they've all occurred in a three-minute stretch. Whoa. Now, you take a look at the league standings. These teams are not shooting very well. For the Hawkeyes, might this kind of game be a tonic? Well, I'll tell you, right here is very interesting. You look at the bottom shooting percentages, 42, 43, 44, and you look at the records. Iowa has the only winning record when you look at somebody shooting in the low 40s. And here, a foul on the wrist, Finley, the net. I'll tell you, he is a tremendous offensive talent. And you haven't seen him do what he does best, which is blow by people and explode to the basket. In a three-minute stretch, he has scored four three-point goals, and he was fouled by Glasper. Finley averages 22 overall. That is the fourth best average ever in Badger history. And it is a two-point game. The Hawkeyes have not trailed. Finley right now is just a one-man show. Iowa back to their starters. Stu Jackson has already used nine different players. You know, the other thing about Finley is he guards Lucky Bill. He'll work at the defensive end. He's not just an offensive player. Winners to the hole, and that's the third Badger block. Eli got that one. And there's another one by Lewis Eli. He leads the Badgers in blocks, now has 28. Adam Carl bringing it down for Wisconsin. Who do you think you're going to look for? Right now, Smith is on Finley. That's the quickness to keep Finley from the basketball. But the height differential is Finley is 6'7", and Smith is 5'11". And the Badgers turn it over, and the Hawkeyes get it back into the lineup for Wisconsin. Comes Carlton McGee. A main player last year, now a role player. Coach Jackson does a great job of getting the ball up the sideline, past Iowa's pressure, and then giving his players a good look at the basket. And a foul there. Kilbride on Smith. And Kilbride had some words for Tom Clark, who said, no, I'm not hearing any of your lip. He quickly silenced him as Kilbride now goes to the bench with his second foul. 
I think when we talk Coach Jackson, you got to talk about the influences of Coach Jackson. One is Rick Patino, who's at Kentucky, and everybody knows Kentucky puts up the threes. But interesting enough, Tom Davis also had an influence as Rick Patino had been at Boston University when Tom was at Boston College. Therefore, Patino picked up on some of the pressure and the outside shooting that he liked, and Jackson's instituted it into his coaching technique. Of course, the other thing is, when you look at the Badgers defensively, you remember that Stu Jackson was one of the kamikaze kids at the University of Oregon under Dick Harder, so he learned some of this frenetic defense there. Adam Carl on the foul. Badgers have been assessed five. The Hawkeyes have been called for three. Yeah, Stu has really brought a lot of enthusiasm into that Wisconsin program. Past years under Coach Yoder, you remember most of those games were in the 50s and 60s. The excitement of the full court pressure and the three-point play brought fans out and excited a lot of the players. As you said earlier, you've got 10 players playing 10 minutes or more. Smith with a good job on the boards on Monday night. Smith now has a total of six. Don Davis against the Badgers, seven and five. Remember, Wisconsin had a five-game winning streak in this series until last year when Iowa swept the series. Well, it's become a great battle, football or basketball, wrestling, you name it. If Smith hits this one, the Hawkeyes build the lead back to four. Smith with seven, the leading Hawkeye scorer. We've got a timeout, 20, the Badgers 16. Of course, Sunday evening, the 64-team field for the NCAA will be filled. 15 schools are already there. Let's take a look at them. They got there one of two ways. In the case of Arizona and Indiana, they clinched a conference championship for an automatic bid. Everybody else winning conference tournaments. Yeah, Ivy's also one of those leagues that uh, you don't have the, the conference championship. You've got to win it out, right? And you look at some more in upset, Sunbelt, Western Kentucky got New Orleans. I think New Orleans will still get in, but that'll get two from the Sunbelt. But you look at Santa Clara down there, they beat regular season Pepperdine. I don't think now Pepperdine can get there. And of course, Illinois State may not. They're a bubble team. And of course, Southern Illinois, a team that Iowa defeated earlier in this year, and they're in representing the Missouri Valley. Yeah, and Paul Lust, the former Iowa player, had a very good championship game. Johnson against Barnes. Now it's Webster against Winters. And a jam. Wow, what a jam by Lewis Eli. Eli, some punctuation there, and it is 20 to 18, Iowa. Both teams using a lot of man-to-man -man defense thus far. You look at Earl battling inside and Eli putting some muscle on him. Now winter season opening. Eli goes for the block. He's had a couple of them already. But this time he hits the arm of Winters and draws his first foul. And you look at McGee, a player that had a lot of minutes last year. They've been cut this year. But it's one thing Coach Jackson told us today, Larry, by playing 10 players, getting a lot of minutes, some of, the, some of those people, and explaining their roles, what they need to do to help this team become a winner, the people have accepted that situation. One of those players, McGee. Badgers were 13 and 18 last year. Stu Jackson has a chance, in fact, will become the first Big Ten coach to take a losing program in his first year, have a winning program, since Lou Henson did it at Illinois back in the mid-70s. Well, you look at this. Wisconsin gets the ball, and in nine seconds, the shot goes up. That's the average time. They've got a down court in three or four seconds sometimes, and have Finley put up that three. This time they work it, and Eli can't get over the outstretched arm of Earl, looking Bill with his third rebound. Webster with the deflection. You know, you talk about strengths of a team. Sometimes you put it up quickly because you're a very good three-point shooting team. You've got Webster, Kilbride, Finley that are very good. You don't want to take off a lot of time and play five on five and end up with a poor option off your inside game. We've seen at least three blocks or maybe four blocks and deflections, and that's what Stu Jackson really prides. He counts them, and in their big win over Purdue in Madison, the Badgers had 40 of those deflections. Harold fouls Earl. So the foul's becoming a factor because that's the seventh against Wisconsin. The Hawkeyes' problem, though, has been converting at the foul line. They are just three out of nine so far. 
They just have not shot the ball well, Larry, over the last five game period. You look at their field goal percentage, it slid just under 40% in the last five games. Free throws now are down to 62%, and the three point shooting 24. I think there's a couple reasons for that. One is the death of Chris Street, who was a great free throw shooter, shot 58% from the field, 87 from the line. And then secondly, the Hawkeyes are tired. Part of that is the rescheduling of games where they've had to play eight in the last 19 days. Iowa now three of 11 from the strike. The Badgers can tie it with a three. Instead, they go inside to Harrell, and Winters is high to pull it down. The Hawkeyes have 21 points, 10 minutes to go in the half. They didn't get this many in 20 minutes on Monday night against the Wildcats as the shot is good by Earl. And Coach Jackson cannot be happy with the ease of which A.C. Earl is getting the basketball. And we talked, Wisconsin has a lot of people they can bring in on the post. Harrell just does not see that baseline bounce pass. A good look by James Winters. A little head fake like he was going to shoot. Then gave the ball low to Earl. Harrell draws his second foul. And so he will leave the lineup. And Eli comes back on for Wisconsin. Earl has duplicated Monday night's total of eight. He is four of four in field goals and 0 of two in free throws. The Hawkeye lead is six, and that equals their second biggest lead early in the game. They were up by eight at 14 to six. Badgers have never led. Johnson for three. Smith against Webster. Murray against Finley. Top assignment for the freshman. He blows by him. Now Webster coming up with it. Finley puts a move on Barnes. Finley hitting 47% of his shots from the field on the season, but way over that tonight. He's got 15 already. Johnson leads the break. Finley. You don't see a lot of teams when they have the numbers go back outside, Matt. No, you don't. But that is part of the coaching strategy of Coach Jackson. Get the open three rather than a two with pressure in your face. That was a two. He was standing on the line. And it is 26 to 20. Iowa by six. Finley against Murray. Barnes. And Eli with a rebound. Boy, Val Barnes continued to have shooting problems. 33% shooting six. He had that 33-point game at Penn State. Get your stopwatch out, folks. It doesn't take long when they start to feel it. Smith, by the way, got a feel. He's already got nine points. His season high, 11 against Michigan State. Eight minutes to play, first half, Earl. 11 for Earl. Iowa duplicates their biggest lead, Johnson. And Earl with his fifth rebound, the rebounding differential really favoring the Hawkeyes. I said Kevin Smith is tired right now. And Al Barnes gets a gap drive and takes it hard to the basket. And they're on their feet as the Hawkeyes roll to their biggest lead. Travel arranged through Northwest Airlines, committed to providing Iowa business travelers with the best on-time performance. Northwest, some people just know how to fly. Well, the Wisconsin Badgers have made just one of their last nine shots, 0 of 5, and here's a reason. You have a point guard going driving and misses a man wide open underneath the basket area, does not get it to him. At the other end, Val Barnes taking charge, taking it to the rack, Easy opportunity to score, and the Badgers look tired at the end of that sequence. Coach Jackson shaking his head. Right now, the 10 players on the floor 
Only two are starters, Kilbride and Finley. On for the Badgers. The Hawkeyes do not have a starter in the lineup following that timeout. And Millard on the takeaway. Iowa by 10 and a chance to add to it. Beautiful feed to Murray, but Johnson reacts well. Back to Hawkeyes, 30 points now, more than they've had at the last time, at the halftime, in any of the last four games. Yeah, they've struggled shooting. Now, here's a game where we've talked. They can get in a flow. They can get in a rhythm, use their athletic ability, and they've done very well with it. And you can see in Kevin Smith's game, AC Earls got a lot of confidence. Millard clears everybody away and scores. And the weakness of the Badgers is rebounding. Last in the Big Ten. Shown right there, Russ Millard's enthusiasm off the glass gets him two. Now a 14-4 run for the Hawkeyes as the rebound by McGee on the Finley miss. Jump ball, this time it belongs to the Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes getting good play out of Earl and Smith and missed just one field goal between them. Millard, Glasper, Webb, Bartles, and Murray right now on the floor for the Hawkeyes who have dominated the boards. This is what you would expect, and you would expect Wisconsin to counter by making and shooting three. That's exactly the storyline of this game. Stu Jackson worried about it, told us today, the Hawkeyes are strongest where we are very weak. He stepped out of bounds with it as Millard got it, but then stepped out of bounds, and it goes back to Wisconsin. 5.54 in their first half. Iowa leads it 32 to 20. And Webster comes back in for Wisconsin. Webster having an outstanding year, first in the conference in both steals and assists with a school record, 159. And Grant Johnson getting that inbound pass. Very soft for that last rebound. Had it taken away by James Bartle. Can you look at the other scores? Oh, here we go. Illinois, Michigan. Holy cow. And Michigan, did they want a big time seed? Number one, maybe in the West? They got to win that one. As always, especially with the parity this year in college basketball, the selection committee is going to have a tough weekend in Kansas City. Especially if some of these teams get upset in their own tournaments. You look at maybe Kentucky, a number one seed. You look at Michigan, Indiana, North Carolina, Kansas. But all of a sudden, upsets come, and the number one seedings get tossed up. Grant Johnson on the foul, sending Murray to the line. Iowa with a 32 to 20 lead. Murray missed his first two free throw opportunities. And we talk about the tournament. Certainly, the Big Ten has to be very proud over the years of their accomplishments. So you look at that, and you look at championships. You get down there, shouldn't say Pac-10, should say UCLA. <laughs> That's true. 13, Pac-10 has 13, and Big Ten has nine. The Hawkeyes now have an eight-point run and have outscored the Badgers 16 to four. And Kenyon Murray getting those free throws there has to build his confidence. Jeff Peterson, as and Millard picks up the technical by reaching over the restraining line. Millard got the tee as he broke the plane. The ball was extended. Now there is a rule change that happened last year. When you take the basketball and you extend it over the end line, a player can grab it and touch it. But here you can see the ball is still plainly out of bounds, even above his head. Millard gets the touch. That is a technical. Now, if the ball comes over the plane, Millard could grab it, but he does not. In fact, Russ is over the end line. And so Webster shoots the technicals, one of the best free throw shooters in the conference. Meanwhile, Millard and Ed Hightower discuss it. Russ tries to explain what he saw, and Millard being told by Hightower it's not the way the officials saw it. That was a good call. There's Eddie Hightower, one of the most highly respected of all officials in this game. Badgers have had a long drought without a basket. They've not scored, and I would think, four and a half minutes, at least from the floor, other than those free throws. 
Gilbride. Well, you give him a square look at the basket right there, and it's like shooting free throws for most other players. Outstanding shooter. When a counted head had gone, and the foul will send Earl to the line. Grant Johnson, who's in primarily for defensive reasons, in there along with Peterson, and it's Peterson who was assisted with his first foul. That's the 10th, and so the Hawkeyes will have two the rest of the way in this first half. Tom Davis really wanting to see his team generate some momentum as Terry Skillet makes his first appearance. Sophomore from Silvis, Illinois, a transfer from Augustana College in the Quad Cities. Now, you get an idea about the type of offense Wisconsin will run. You look at the unit that's out there now as you see Tom Davis, but Wisconsin's two inside players average a total of six points a game. So you know the ball is not going to go inside unless it's an inside out. For the Hawkeyes, their 15th free throw opportunity, and that's no surprise that Iowa would have a huge edge in the free throw attempt situation. Especially as easily as they've gotten the ball to A0 in this game. One of the things you have to think about in this game, Mac, is who's going to have something left at the end? The Hawkeyes. On a real busy schedule, the Badgers have been on it since Saturday. Of course, Iowa played Monday. Finley's been automatic from the three-point line. A little hesitation there. Now that's Earl with three. The roof would have blown off of this place if that one gone down. And by the way, the crowd is making some noise tonight. I think Tom Davis there wished his six-foot-ten center would have maybe held it up, got a little bit better opportunity. Starter Brian Kelly comes back on, a sophomore from Decatur, Georgia. But Coach Davis did say he wanted his kids to have fun. He felt they were getting tired, felt it was practices, and the games were a little bit of an effort. And he knew this game would be up and down. So have fun with it, guys. We should be in the tournament. He thought on Monday night his freshman might have been guilty of trying too hard. Badgers try to cut an 11-point Iowa lead. Barnes finding Kilbride. And here come the Hawkeyes. Looking to, oh, what a move against Finley. Outstanding pass, Kenyon Murray. And then the bucket by Looking Bill. And Wisconsin's right back in your face, looking to go up for the three again. The Badgers have so many weapons of three point range. Let's do just one of them. And the foul call on Skillet. Right there, Skillet charged with a foul as he tried to go through a screen rather than try and make space. And the way you make space is use your arms, your elbows, or your lower body to try and get over the screen. And that is only the fourth foul called on the Hawkeyes where the Badgers have already been called for 10. We'll be back after this message from your local station. This is the Raycom Network. Or West Quickstat. As you look at this, Wisconsin, again, the game plan, you look at the statistical sheet, it's right there. They've got a lot of threes, 12 of them, 42%. And Finley's 15 points. You look at Iowa, A0, it's five of six after his missed three. And he's the rebound leader with seven. So it's been Mr. Outside versus Mr. Out, uh, inside for Iowa. Just to give you an idea, on the season, the Badgers coming in 511 three-point attempts. The Hawkeyes on the season, 280. Which really means the Badgers are virtually never out of a game. Johnson's really not had any offensive flow in this half except when Finley got hot. And you've got to credit Iowa defense as Johnson nails a three. I'll tell you, Tracy Webster has changed his style of play over the last year. He is looking to find the people on the perimeter rather than become the scoring point guard. Winners using his strength to score. We said Johnson at that post position a little soft. Not able to withstand winners and the Hawkeyes not being able to get back on that three. But I'll tell you, Wisconsin does a great job of setting up three-point shooters. They will have three or four of them on that perimeter game. Again, that Rick Pitino influence on Stu Jackson, and you certainly see it. 
The biggest difference, obviously, between a Wisconsin and Kentucky, you don't have a mesh for it. But got one coming, guys. Rashad Griffith, a great seven-footer out of Chicago, he will give Wisconsin that inside game. And though he is the most publicized of the Badger recruits, he's not the only one. They got a guy named Jalil Roberts coming in, who they say is a Michael Finley type player, plays for Bobby Hurley in Jersey City. Yeah, Jalil Roberts, tremendous athlete. One game this year, 65 points. I'll tell you, he can light it up. Tremendous wing play. Also a point guard coming in, a scholarship available, and Stu Jackson has really set the world on fire with his recruiting. Finley. Even though he had that one flurry, would you say the Hawkeyes have contained Finley pretty well? Yeah, he got the threes going. And you kept him on the perimeter. Yes, he's dangerous, but he hasn't been as dynamic as he can be with his inside and outside game. Again, Webster looking to drive and dish. Finley trying to establish space so he can shoot with a little lowering of the shoulder. A. Cyril stood his ground in there. And then Winters a nice quick hand to push it away. 145 to play in the half. Iowa leads it 42-31. The Badgers to inbound as Kelly will trigger. <laughs> Finley makes a move on Murray who swipes it from him. The Hawkeyes steal leader has another one. That's his 41st of the year. And Smith is hot. 11 for Smith, equaling a season high. Eli right outside to Johnson, who's now hit three in a row from three-point range. He got off to a slow start, but now Jason Johnson is on a roll. He has 48 trades on the year. Kevin Smith has to enjoy this game. Hawkeyes using the paint so effectively for their offense. Have oh, Earl with 17. And now Barnes. Wisconsin just went to sleep on the inbounds play. Val Barnes, quiet defender, just picks his moment and then flashes for the steal. And we are into the final minute of this first half. Is this a contrast to Monday night? <laughs> yeah, that one put basketball back a few years with lack of scoring, and this one is the up-tempo scoring. Jump ball. Hey, Kenyon Murray has made a couple of strong defensive plays now in the last minute. Possession arrow gives it to the Badgers with 23.6 seconds to play. And it has brought Carver to its feet. Last 20 seconds. Hawkeyes have their highest scoring half in a while. They got 46 at Penn State. And watch They've got 48 already. Watch Wisconsin set up a three-point shot. That will be their first option. And they are running low on time. And the Hawkeyes will enjoy a 14-point halftime advantage. Iowa on a couple of solid defensive plays by Kenyon Murray equal their biggest lead as they go to the locker room. The halftime score, Iowa 48, Wisconsin 34, and we'll be right back. This game is being brought to you by Counter Lock and Load. Jim, Iowa back to their starting five, and so are the Badgers. So often you see Iowa go for Earl on the first play. Webster with a pickoff. Right Kelly turns to face the bucket, and Earl controls the rebound. You can see Earl kind of a sluggish game Monday, but he's really making up for it tonight. That was his seventh rebound. It's just been a very good, fluid basketball game for both teams, being able to do what they like to do. As far as half-court offense, some pressure sets. Good bounce pass by Val Barnes. That's very effective, the bounce pass on that baseline side. Defender finds it very hard to get to. 
And if your center makes a good reception low, where he is down with his legs low, reaching for that ball, then he can grab it and power it to the basket all in one movement. That's the second foul on Finley, and so Earl looks for his 18 point. And the marshmallow rim gives him a roll. Earl leading scoring for the Hawkeyes on the season at 16.2. By the way, Matt, congratulations on your son, Kent McCausland. First team, all Mississippi Valley Conference at West Waterloo High. You got to be a proud papa. Well, you know, you, I, I certainly am. I'll tell you, West, I did a good job late in the season. I saw a shooting performance of last night by an East High player, Cedric Robinson, first state all uh, performer last year. He was tremendous, 34 points in one half. And you'll see him next week down at the state tournament. With the rebound is Kelly. Kilbride for three. A three point basket for Kilbride. Kilbride, the top three point shooter on the Badgers, hits 44% of them. That's his second tonight. And it's a 13 point Hawkeye advantage. Again, you talk about physical conditioning, Mac. Eight games, 19 nights for the Hawkeyes. They have the big lead now, but you've got to wonder, can the Badgers wear them down? Well, right now, I think the Hawkeyes just feel very good about their game. You can see they're running their offense. Wisconsin is not a strong inside defensive team. Iowa seems to have an option. Anytime they want to, they can go to AC Earl. Smith leaves it short. Harold's got the rebound. Here's Finley. And Winters made him change the shot. Winters got a piece of him. At least Steve Wilmer thought so. James Winters didn't think so. I'll tell you, sometimes that will happen to an official. They anticipate the contact, getting ready to call it and make a definitive statement. Foul or no, I thought a great defensive effort by James Winters. And surprising, Finley didn't really take it hard to the rack and look for the dunk over Winters. So it shows the intimidation factor of not only A.C. Earl, but James Winters, the reputation he has around the league. Glasper replaces Smith at the point. As Finley goes to the line, he's the Badgers' leading scorer. 15 tonight. We have a moment. Let's take a look at updating other scores around the conference. Ohio State over Minnesota. And Indiana just having their way with the Spartans. And we have a tie there. Michigan. They must want that number one seed, possibly in the West. That is a real dogfight between the second and third place teams in the league. Finley brings Wisconsin to within 11. Two minutes have been played, second half. Hard to go through three bodies. They're letting you bang a little bit out there. Point guard's got to recognize it, take it down the sideline. Earl waves for the ball, gets it, and puts it in. <laughs> 21 for AC. The season high, 27 against Michigan State. Nice job of switching out on Finley, trying to keep him from the basketball. Kelly tried to keep it alive, but Barnes comes up with it. Barnes on the penetration, and Kilbride with the rebound. Kelly backing in against Glasper, and Brian Kelly has scored his first basket. He averages five a ball game. That's his first in this one. Again, Iowa looking for Earl. And really, Harold having difficulty against A.C. Earl, and that's why the Hawkeyes are going to him continually. Well, this is a bit unusual right here. Outside shot available for Webster, who I think last year would have taken it. Right now, able to dump it down inside, and a basket opportunity, one of the rarer Bucky Badger baskets on the inside. In the lineup now, Jeff Peterson, as Finley has drawn his third foul. Also coming in, Jason Johnson, Finley will leave. So now it's Johnson, Kilbride, Eli, Webster, and Jeff Peterson in the Badger lineup. Millard has come in for the Hawkeyes, as has Murray. And a nice look for Millard, who gets it back and gets it down. 
Hallard went up soft, got it rejected. Grabbed it, went hard to the glass, and got the basket. Eli tries to go into Earl's neighborhood, and AC forces him to walk. Eli looked there, saw the Big Ten's leading shot blocker, and it bothered him. Eli, a good jumper himself, but he knows who's behind him. Little trouble with the power. Got to take that ball. I think John Amici told us best. He himself, leading shot blocker in the Big Ten for Penn State, said, when I get the ball and I go against the shot blocker, I take it right to their nose. And I think that tells you a lot. What he means is you cannot give the guy any space where he can block it. You got to take it right where he has no room to reach to get to the basketball. By the way, Earl and Amici tied for the shot block leadership in the conference right now. AC trying to get it and trying to become the first player ever to lead the Big Ten in rebounding and block shots in the same season. Millard wheeling towards the hole, and he is fouled. I tell you, you got to like Russ Millard, his intensity. He loves to play the game hard, establishes a low position, and here Webb, normally an inside player himself, good baseline bounce pass, and see how he catches it low. His legs are bent. Now he can power that ball up to the rim. And when he's in there, second foul. He, got, he got fouled. And so Millard looks for his eighth point, his highest 10 against Minnesota. And the freshman from Cedar Rapids, Washington, continues to blossom as the season wears on. The teaching and the coaching going on, first year through the Big Ten, and the only battle this year between Iowa and Wisconsin, although it's not the only time the Iowa basketball team went to Madison. No, that's true. And an unscheduled visit there on the flight home from Michigan. Fog prohibited them from landing in Iowa, so they landed in Madison and took the four-hour bus ride home. John Streif kidded the freshman said, I promise you, you'd see every Big Ten city. <laughs> he didn't tell him it would be because they had to go there at 5 in the morning. Bartles with a save. And Bartles, who's from Wisconsin, from Freedom, Wisconsin, makes a big play against the Badgers. <laughs> Foul away from the play. And I think Bartles is called on the push. Now, if this is against Bartles... And I it mean, is. Jim, Jim couldn't hold anybody off that's certainly going to magnify or, or change the, the course of this game. The Hawkeyes led at the half by 14. They still lead by 14, and we'll be right back. Shows Iowa's been there more, scored more. You add them all up, and it looks like this. Iowa 55 and Wisconsin 41. Eli, Peterson, Webster, Kilbride, and Johnson in an ever-changing lineup for Steve Jackson. Millard, Barnes, Glasper, Murray, and Earl on the floor for Iowa. Peterson pulls up and hits his first. I've noticed Wisconsin's gone out of a lot of full-court pressure. Basically now, coming up man-to-man, -man, Iowa's really taking advantage of getting the ball down court for easy opportunities. Again, Earl beat Eli. Johnson closed from behind and whacked AC. Kenyon Murray, not the baseline bounce pass. This one to the open hand. Good help from the weak side coming down. Earl gets hit in the mouth. And of course, the other night, Kevin Smith got hit there and had five stitches in his lower lip. Earl goes to the line. He and Val Barnes have been named to the U.S. Basketball Writers Association All-District Team. Also in a very nice gesture, Chris Street was selected an honorary member of that team. And by the way, at halftime tonight, the Des Moines Register presented a check for $32,000 to the Chris Street Memorial Fund. The money was raised through the sale of a photograph of Chris Street and Iowa coach Tom Davis, taken by Register photographer Bill Niebergall. And again, Russ Millard in there having their best game. I believe, of his Hawkeye career. And so the Hawkeyes get a three-point play the difficult way, only the 58-43. And the man that kept that loose, Russ Millard. Millard has been everywhere, showing some great confidence and poise. He's having to learn as he goes. Earl with a block. But the Badgers put it back in. Peterson with his second bucket. That was maintained a double-figure lead since about the six-minute mark in the first half.
Hawkeye ball, but first a Badger change. As into the lineup comes Howard Moore, a sophomore from Chicago. Now here's a guy who's only played in eight ball games, seeing his first action in this one. But again, Stu Jackson's philosophy, everybody's got a roll. And Webster comes up with a steal. The Badgers have a four on one break. First bucket for Webster. I'd say a changing role. Last year, Webster, one of the great scorers in the Big Ten. And Stu Jackson, with the experience of the NBA, said, Tracy, if you want to make it to the NBA, you can't do it as a scoring guard, but you can be a point guard. Got him to understand that. He's done a good job for the Badgers. He's been quite a point guard. 159 assists already, a school record, and best in the conference. You're right, last year he averaged 17 points a game, and those overall averages high. Not that high. His conference average is down, but he's doing other things. And here comes Webster on another breakaway for the Badgers. No buy. Badly with Murray, and the Badgers keep it alive. Johnson. And they look for that three, creeping back into the game. It's the first time since about the seven and a half minute mark the Badgers have been under a double figure deficit. Let's see if the Hawkeyes look to go back to AC Earl. Or have Val Barnes look for a scoring opportunity. You watch Earl. He is working hard to get open against Eli and is accomplishing that. Kilbride trying to guard Murray. And for Kilbride, it is his third foul. The two Badger starters, Finley and Kilbride, you see there each with three fouls. For the Hawkeyes, nobody with more than one. In fact, Iowa only six fouls in the game. Yeah, they just don't, won't get very many because, again, lack of the inside game by Wisconsin. You do not get many fouls when you watch a three-point shooting team. Murray takes it in against Kilbride. Kilbride, trying to guard Kenyon Murray, picks up his second foul in about 15 seconds. How many goodies? And that will hurt the Badgers because Kilbride, very good shooter from the perimeter. Watch him try and slide. Beat Murray, cannot get there. Kind of nudges him with a shoulder and a knee. Draws the foul. So Kilbride to the bench with 13.04 left, having drawn his fourth foul. Badgers already with six, so the Hawkeyes will go to the bonus on the next one. And Earl scores again. 24 for AC. And what a steal by Murray. Beauty. Looking Bill complete some terrific passing by the Hawkeyes. The quickness of Kenyon Murray. Unselfish play by Kevin Smith. And Kevin Smith looks like he turned his ankle, limping a little bit. Finley taking it deep. Out of bounds off the Hawkeyes. Kenyon Murray averaging six and a half points a game. But the things he does to disrupt another team's offense, the steals he comes up with, the rebounds he gets for a guard, he's done a lot of things very well this year. Very explosive. We saw him against Northwestern with an explosive dunk from the corner. That was an extremely quick steal. Twelve and a half left, Iowa by 12. Johnson. And Kenyon Murray with a block. And Barnes comes down with it. Now Smith will lead the attack. He finds the trailer. And Earl clobbered by Webster. Now they do a waltz. Kenyon Murray steals, blocks. He's done a terrific job defensively tonight. The block before it gets to the glass. And then... The speed of Kevin Smith playing one of his better games. And a hit body hang time there. The jump off to Earl. And then Webster as you look at Kenyon Murray. I'd say feeling quite good about himself right now. And of course for a freshman it's hard to maintain a confidence game in and game out. But right now Kenyon's feeling pretty good and the crowd loves his effort. A couple of weeks ago he had told us he just felt he was really getting tired. It would have been the, the end of a high school season for him. 20 games and still had 10 more to go. Now you find those fresh legs when you start talking NCAA time. Now 25 for Earl. 
And Earl, last year, twice against the Badgers in double figures and free throw attempts. They put him on the line a lot. Well, they just don't do a good job of getting around him, denying him the ball. Earl really able to flash to the ball, get it, and then make his turn for his offensive opportunity. Finley does not get the roll, but does get the rebound. Of course, this Wisconsin team did lose over the last couple weeks to Northwestern and Penn State. Larry, as we talked earlier, and one of the reasons was Michael Finley, during that period of time, had strep throat. 102 temperature. And very difficult to play at peak performance when you are sick like that. But Stu Jackson did not use it as an excuse. Barnes out for the Hawkeyes. <clears throat> Excuse me. 12 3 left, and Iowa leaving it 64 to 50. Don't leave me now, Larry. Oh, no, I'm not, not, I'm not about to. play by play. <laughs> not about to. 18 from Michael Finley. You take a look at the Badgers and why they're never out of the game. Look at that. Well, you look at number two, number eight, number nine, and the three-point percentages. Wisconsin does a good job of getting the people open and then a good job of being able to score. Now the Badgers trying to put it on full-court pressure, see if they can get a turnover by the Hawkeyes. Iowa by a dozen with a dozen minutes to play. Johnson on the steal. Here come the Badgers. Eli walks. The ball back to the Hawkeyes, but first we have a timeout. 11.50 to go, and we'll be back after this message from your local station. This is the right. Badgers have not ranked nationally at any time in the season since 74, but Stu Jackson got that accomplished in January. Of course, he's been in the NBA, and... Part of his philosophy, you can tell, is that he provides a scheme for his players to flourish, but it's still a player's game. And with Michael Finley and Tracy Webster, you can make it a player's game with those two. Add Richard Griffith to this crew, the other recruits we mentioned, they are really going to be tough next year. Talk recruits, Iowa, Jess Settles, and Chris Kingsbury. Chris Kingsbury, a McDonald All-American, same as Rashad Griffith. So he'll be playing in that game, having a very good season. And Jess Settles next week down in Des Moines, looking for a state championship. Last year, they were runner-up at Winfield Mount Union. And this year, he tries to finish his career with a title. Webb, Glasper, Winters, Looking Bill. Bartles on the floor for the Hawkeyes. And Iowa has a third recruit, John Carter from Burlington Junior College. Six foot eight athlete, be able to come in, play inside, and the Hawkeyes will probably still look for one more big guy. Turnover on Glasper. We've been taking a look at time of possession, Mac. That has been such a factor in this game. Let's look at it in the second half. I'll tell you right there, 8.5 seconds in the second half per possession, and that didn't hurt that average any right there. And you gotta remember, in the NBA, it was a 24 second clock, not 45. So Stu Jackson used to quick decisions as a head coach. Ball bouncing back and forth until Bartles comes up with it. Here is Winters. Against oh. the double team, gets his own rebound, and puts it back. And Winters slapped from behind, talking to Eddie Hightower going down court. And the Hawkeyes open up 14-point advantage and a chance to make it more. So the Badgers cut it down to eight, and then Iowa came roaring back. Here's Eli with a steal. The Badgers have missed their last seven shots. Finley looked like he'd rise for three. Instead, finds Eli. Harold got the tip. Looking Bill pushing on him. Let's see what the call will be. As Harold. Guilty of pushing off on Looking Bill. Harold gets the foul. It's his third foul. We get another look at it. No basket. Harold called for the push. Harold back over Wade Looking Bill's back. And that is already 18 fouls on Wisconsin as Harold has his third. Finley has three and Kilbride's on the bench with four. Stu Jackson wondering why the tipping didn't count, asking Eddie Hightower about it, not buying the explanation. And Wade Looking Bill, a position player, not blessed with great jumping ability, but he knows how to use his body and keeps the man between, excuse me, himself between the man and the ball that time to be able to get that foul. 
looking bill five points let's like a look at wade in many many years ago hey, he's always been a great free throw shooter lower left hand corner wade looking bill 1979 when the state free throw contest the iowa elks association 22 out of 25 so some things don't change haircut but not free throw ability 82 percent on the year two of two tonight as millard now replaces looking bill and the crowd really into this one as Mr. and Mrs. Looking Bill sitting in on one of the last games that his their son will play in this building. So the Hawkeyes wrapping up the regular season at home on Saturday afternoon, the Illini at 2 o'clock. Finland moves in, and the officials confer to see if they agree. Tom Clark says, yes, I agree with Hightower. It's a blocking foul on Murray. That's what a good official will do. You saw Hightower there, Mac, and he took a look, and he, he made sure that Clark saw it the same way he did. Well, the officials, this is a bang-bang play. Very difficult to call it, and the officials were looking for help from each other. They, there's an obvious foul, but is it not a charge? But that is the most difficult call in basketball. Block charge. Finley leading the Badgers in scoring with 19. Last year, honorable mention all-conference, but the numbers he's put up this year, leading the Badgers in scoring and rebounding, you got to figure a better honor awaits Michael Finley this year. Finley, a 34-point performance against Ohio State. That was the third best single performance in the league this year. 21 for Finley in this ball game. The Badgers are within 14 of Iowa with 9.52 to go. Now that was the margin at halftime, and they just keep hanging around there, make a little run. Iowa comes back. Murray to the baseline. I'll tell you, there was a foul there when Millard got fouled. But you talk about the philosophy of officials, which is advantage, disadvantage. Millard's arm was grabbed, but it was not an offensive attempt area. He's 40 feet from the basket. You will not get that call very often. Hawkeyes by 16 on the Murray putback. Nine, ten remains. Iowa leads it 70 to 54. Finley makes a move on Glassburg. Murray's ahead of the pack. Hawkeyes find him. It's almost like a double assist. Millard kicks it out ahead to Glasper, where he has to really stretch out and reach for the ball, and then the pass to Murray for the dunk. And Murray going for yet another steal, almost got it. Boy, he's been active tonight. And a bounds off Iowa. Let's get a look at the feed from Smith. That's from Montero Glasper. Glasper giving it up to Murray on the dunk. And then Murray, starting to understand at the collegiate level how hard you have to play, comes right back and deflects the ball again. Murray, eight points, at least three steals and a block. Eight and a half to go. Iowa with their biggest lead as Eli battles Earl. Only the second bucket for Lewis Eli. It's been Michael Finley and little else for the Badgers. Eli. Earl gets Eli into the air and is fouled. Eli second and Earl will go to the line. Now Tracy Webster thinks he, he whiffed Earl. He said, I can't reach that high. How can I foul him? And the Badgers continue to make changes. Grant Johnson comes on. Carlton McGee comes on. Eli leaves. And now another change. Adam Carl, who is a walk-on, a well-traveled walk-on. He's attended Wisconsin before. They went to Illinois State, then walked on at Bradley, and now came back and walked on at Wisconsin and has seen some playing time this year as a walk-on. Walk-a-thon. <laughs> you said it. You said it. Now, as Earl goes to the line, we talk about postseason honors. 
you and I agree on are all Big Ten team, but it's not easy. There have been some outstanding performances in the Big Ten this year. Hard to pick a top five. Well, you've got some great players there, but people like Jalen Rose and Greg uh, Graham, Deion Thomas, you know, don't make it. How do you leave these guys off? Uh, your player of the year, who's your player of the year in the Big Ten? I think I got to go with Cheney based on the success of Indiana. Look, at this may be it. There you go, Russ Millard loves that dunk. He's been telling you and I he was going to get one of those for weeks. <laughs> and Finley, despite a touch by Earl, got it down 76 58 Hawkeyes. <laughs> Earl against Johnson. McGee with a rebound. Seven and a half to play. The Hawkeyes in front by 18. Oh. Earl and Johnson collide. And the foul goes on Johnson. Finley starting to struggle with the stroke. Couple reasons. Being tired. The pace of the game. You lose your legs. And then all of a sudden, he has not hit a couple. And you start to lose a little confidence with it. There was a little hitch in his shot. Didn't feel like he really wanted to release it. And there's the 10th team foul on the Badgers. So the Hawks, who have already shot lots of free throws, going to shoot a lot more. It's going to take a great comeback by the Badgers because everything is going Iowa's way. The and tempo of the game Iowa likes, they're on the free throw line, and they're patient when they have to be. And Iowa has really not let up. They've kind of continued to pour it on. They've had really no dry spells in this game. Of course, they're looking ahead. Illinois. And there you see Russ Millard, best game as a Hawkeye. Outstanding effort. Used his talent, shot the outside shot, aggressive on the boards. And they're now a 30.9 on the board for Earl. The Hawkeyes lead by 20. We'll return to Carver Hawkeye right after this. Standing job, 9 of 11 from the field, 12 of 15 from that free throw line. Season high, 30 points. And I guess you can say it was a quiet 30. 11 shots from the field, and you develop out of that 30 points. Finley, 15 in that first half, and now he started to struggle a little bit in the second half. Just eight. 7.23 to go. The Hawkeyes lead it by 20 points, and the Hawkeyes put on pressure. Kilbride back in the game with four fouls. That's why, because he's a shooter. And Murray, who has done it all tonight for the Hawkeyes, has the rebound. Five rebounds, eight points for Kenyon Murray, and a whole bunch of defensive stops. Early on in the show, you talked about people had to step up their game. You have Murray, you have Millard, looking for job, and Smith. And you have Earl tying a career high with 32. You got 32 against Iowa State last year. And then take a look at the other conference games as Finley will go to the line. Well, Ohio State still continue to have a lead, but the Gophers continue to sneak back in it. They need that one in the tournament. And Indiana, that one will be all over soon. No sneaking back for the Spartans tonight. And the uh, Michigan Wolverines down 10 points earlier, now up by four. You look at A.C. Earl has equaled a career high with 32 points. This comes after eight against Northwestern, which was just the second time in 61 games that he failed to score in double figures. And tonight, a determined A.C. has come back. You know, if Illinois loses, that sets up a battle for Iowa and Illinois to tie for third. Interesting, Illinois, third in the Big Ten, I don't believe was rated at all in the top 25 any time this season. I think you're right. For some of that, they had four or five losses in December. Never got a chance to get into the top 25. By the way, tying for third would be the best Hawkeye finish since 88. Oh, Finley with 25. But Iowa in control by 20 with 6.34 to go. And as Smith drives, he is fouled by Carlton McGee. Well, we've got an opportunity. This is our final Hawkeye Network telecast. So many people have made our work so easy and helped you enjoy Hawkeye basketball this year. I'd like to thank some of them right now. Our director, David Woodward, technical directors, Rich White, Mike Carruthers, and Steve Kurtenbach. 
on audio, Michael Miller, Ron Rush, and William Crawford. Video, John Turner. People on the cameras included Melanie Campbell, Jim Kirby, Mark Engler, Vern Tiggs, Jeff Loopson, Wayne Anderson, Jim Berg, John Way, videotape Bob Bracken and Randy Schildmeyer and a whole bunch of others that we'll get to a little bit later. I'll tell you, those people do make it easy. Do a great job. They, they really bring you Hawkeye basketball. The audio, the video, the replays. Earl gets the rebound. Boy, the Hawkeye just continuing to go quickly for the loose basketballs for Earl, his eighth rebound, to go along with 32 points. That's an all Big Ten night. Yeah. And you know, you talk about the guys who had not stepped up having to do so. AC needs to elevate his game a level as a senior and a dominating senior. And certainly you get the feeling he can do that. But well, when you get to tournament time, Iowa has a lot of different dimensions. One of the key dimensions is the style of play. Not a lot of people play eight, nine, ten people. Pressure with different sets, half court, full court, zone, man to man. It's very difficult to get ready for Iowa in tournament play. And speaking of the tournament, certainly the Hawkeyes have a terrific NCAA tournament tradition as we take a look at it. Well, final four appearances, 55, 56, we weren't around, but 1980, Ronnie Lester, and then Tom Davis, you know, he has never lost a first round game, and only once has he lost in the second round. And in fact, Davis is 13 and seven in the NCAA, that is sixth best among active coaches. And if you don't run into Duke a lot, it would be a better percentage. It certainly would. And the Hawkeyes shouldn't have that problem this year. No, I don't think you'll see Duke and Iowa in the same bracket. They might be in the same region, but not in that same bracket. 33 for Earl, who, by the way, needed only six tonight and has certainly got those early. Now has 34. He has become the third all-time leading scorer past B.J. Armstrong tonight. Now only Roy Marble and Fred Stokes have scored more than the senior from Moline, A.C. Earl. Of course, Jimmy Bartles likes that rebound. Home state is Wisconsin. Five and a half remain at the Hawkeyes. Really had been a while since they have really blown anybody out. A 22-point pad with just over five minutes to play. Now, sure, the Badgers can fill it up in a hurry, but you get the feeling the Hawkeyes are very much in control. In control, and as Coach Davis said, having fun. And still playing with terrific intensity despite the big lead. The kind of a game you want the week before you go to the tournament. Oh, Bartles needs to shoot it. Oh. Took a chip out of the backboard there. <laughs> Webster for three. Badgers just can't get that offense going. Nothing is dropping for them. Webster comes up with just his second basket. He comes in averaging 14.6. He's got six. And Looking Bill pulls it down. I think as much as anything, Mac, what has impressed me, and I mentioned it a moment ago, this is so far for the Hawkeyes a 36-minute effort. There have really not been any lags in the Hawkeye game tonight. It's been about as complete a game as maybe the Northwestern was not. Different style, different effort at various times, but this one had a lot of fluid movement, had rebounding, had Earl doing what he does best, and good set plays when they needed to set him. It's an interesting situation. The Hawkeyes have done a fairly long stretch with this lineup, and Val Barnes has been absent a fairly good length of time. I'm sure with the tired legs, Tom Davis knowing Illinois is coming up, the tournament's coming up, let some of the other players, like Jim Bartles, Kenyon Murray, Glasper, get some additional experience. Look at Winters and Skillet. Of course, Winters being bothered by a touch of the flu, and he's resting right now. Hawkeyes by 20. We'll be back after this message from your local station. This is the Raycon Network. Last longer. Lord have stepped it up. Yeah, two first-year players. Right there, Murray with the steal. Kicks it ahead to Russ Millard with his first collegiate dunk. A strong hang on the rim, bring it down. If somebody in his family has the VCR rolling, he'll want to remember that one. 
He certainly waited long enough for it. <laughs> and you know he was happy with it. And the Hawkeyes still scrapping, and Murray, who is the team steal leader, 40 coming in, has added... We're going to check on the total, but at least three steals to that tonight. He's just been everywhere. Behind the pick, Webster having trouble with the pass. The quickness of Murray matches Finley very well. Earl with his third foul. And while the Badgers go to the line, thanks again to some of the crew who have made these Hawkeye telecasts possible this year, working on, on electronic graphics. Al Broughton and Lori Gerard, the assistant directors, Michelle Medbury and Beth Tigert, working on stats, Doug Schmidt, and it's nice that he's getting a workout tonight. <laughs> I thought he probably had to back up to the pay window on Monday, but I think Doug has made up for it tonight, don't you? Yeah, we gave you some extra things to do. Tom Barr has also helped us with stats this year, and our timeout coordinator, Michael Lang Schulte. Without question, though, you want to thank uh, Mike Helling, the producer, who's done a great job all year long. Three and a half to go, and it is a 19-point Hawkeye lead. I want to go to 21 and 8, to go to 10 and 7, and again, depending on what happens between Illinois and Michigan, if Illinois loses, then the Hawkeyes, by beating the Illini on Saturday, could tie for third in this very interesting and well-played Big Ten season. What many consider the premier conference in the nation. That's really going to set up a great battle come Saturday. Illinois, Iowa, for third place or a tie for it. The Hawkeyes can win. And I think in both cases, teams looking for a fourth or a fifth seed in the NCAA tournament. 36 for AC Earl. That'll get him a record. That's the most points that a Hawkeye player scored in the arena. He may have a chance to get to that 4 0. The old record, by the way, Greg Stokes had 35 against George Mason here back in 1984, but AC now with 36. Of course, it was Brian Quinnette of Washington State who holds the arena record. He got 45 here back in 1986. I'll tell you, there weren't more than 45 people in to watch that one because it was the second day of the Amana Hawkeye Classic, and it was the first game. Peterson grabs the rebound. We are down to 212. The Badgers, who 10 days ago were looking at an NCAA bid, about to absorb their third consecutive loss. I'm sure the disappointing thing was the two losses earlier came to Penn State and Northwestern. Those are ones you have to get, especially Penn State at home if you're going to get to the tournament. Now the Hawkeyes will pull it out. Tom Davis about to remove some of his starters. I think A.C. Earl is going to get a curtain call here on a night that he has scored 36 points, most by a Hawkeye in this arena, which is, of course, now in its 10th season. Wade Lookingville playing a little point guard, ball control. Shot clock down to 12 as the Hawkeyes milk it with a 19-point lead. The four on the clock. It's going well for the Hawkeyes and Kevin Smith. He'll forget about the five stitches. And it's a season high 14 for Smith. Eli at the other end fouled as he tried to put it up. Kevin Smith tonight, 14 points. Early in the ball game, he scored a quick five, and that really got the Hawkeyes rolling. And certainly, at point guard, he has done a terrific job. And Kevin has played under control. You know, we talked earlier, he picked the right ball to start this game, I'll tell you. Got to be happy with his performance. Okay, he's a young man that wants to be a basketball coach. That uh, talked to him a little bit today about his picks for the Final Four. And he had Florida State, North Carolina, Michigan, and Iowa. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> For A.C. Earl, the 26th double-double of his career, the 13th of the year, and a new career high in points for him. Interesting, too, about Kevin. He says he doesn't watch basketball to watch it. He watches to learn. So he really enjoys watching what coaches do strategy-wise, end of games. And he said, someday, it'll be Coach Smith. 
Tom Davis says he'd make a good one, and he's a guy who ought to know. Yep. Go to the waning moments of our final sure. telecast of the season. It's sure been fun working with you this year. It's been a lot of fun. Hawkeyes have played, had some unusual circumstances during the year, but have just rebounded beautifully with great coaching, Tom Davis, the staff, and kids with great effort. And you've got a game coming up Saturday. You'll finish the season doing a regional for Iowa and Illinois, Raycon. Good luck with that one. Thank you. Thank you. And certainly, this will be a season to remember. You're right. Nobody will ever forget so many things that happened in this season and the context in which they happened. You know, what about Coach of the Year in the Big Ten? Who would you pick? You know, right now, I would think between Bob Knight, whose team's going to win the championship, and I'd have to say Tom Davis. Yep. You look at the job he's done, and what he had to do with Chris Street's death and to bring this team back, I think he's going to be mentioned on a lot of people's ballots. Those two names, to me, surface far and above the others. I would agree with you. What a night, though, for ACRO. 11 of 13 from the field, 14 of 17 in free throws, 10 rebounds. ACRO, what, 36 points. And he did it the hard way, inside. Not those three-pointers, not those rainbows. It's work where he goes. And you talk again, 13 field goal attempts and 36 points. My old coach, Ralph Miller, used to have an offensive efficiency rating where he said if you could average a point for every time you took a field goal, that was pretty good. Yeah. Not great, but good. And here you got A.C. Earl almost at a three-to-one ratio. Very impressive night for Earl, the second-to-last game on the home floor. After a career that's now seen to become Iowa's third all-time leading scorer. And look out, Russ. Oh, great work. Now that just tells you what a great night Russ Millard is having. Setting up a teammate, Montero Glasper, and those were the two that stayed after practice today along with A.C. Earl, and they rebounded for each other. And right there, a little freshman work giving it back. Again, Matt, great working with you this year. Hey, it's been fun. And hello uh, to all the Hawkeye fans, and we'll see you somewhere in NCAA tournament time. Tom Davis, his team has won its 21st. A.C. Earl leads the way with 36. And we'll be back after this message from DuPont Soybean Herbicides.